Good evening and welcome to Salt Lamp Gaming. Uh, if you didn't see the introductory part of, uh, of this video series, basically I'm doing uh, a solitaire playthrough slash after action report of um, the extended scenario for Fire in the Lake. Just quickly before I um, get into what's happened here, uh, I, there's a few things I forgot to touch on in the introduction. So I mentioned uh, what each faction is looking for to score, but I forgot to say how many points they need to, to win outright. So um, the ARVN and the US are looking for a score of over 50. So that's just a reminder, America support and available, number of troops available. Um, ARVN is coin control and patronage. Uh, the Viet Cong are looking for over 35 points and the NVA are looking for over 18 points. So um, with that in mind, where are we? Who's, uh, who scored what in that first? section of play. So as it stands, I've got 41 points of support and availability and uh, troops available. ARVN has 46 points of coin control and patronage. Viet Cong have got 28 points, opposition and bases, and the NVA have got um, 13 points of uh, NVA control and bases. So that was a pretty interesting first round of play. Um, the NVA, I'd say, were probably the most active there. Um, you can probably see they've gone from having no troops on the board and four bases to having all of their bases out, and they've basically cut the country in half here. So they've um, they've come in pretty hard in Bin Din, and they're, they're backed up as well in Southern Laos too, so I'm going to have a bit of a... I've got a bit of a nightmare on my hands there. And um, they were also able to actually infiltrate and replace the Viet Cong base with their base there, and also in Tay Ninh as well. So not only have they got a base in Tay Ninh right next to Saigon, it's a tunneled base, which is even harder for me to um, to remove. So yeah, they've got um, control of those two regions as well, which are worth two points each. So um, quite, a lot of, uh, quite a lot of points gained there uh, in the first round of play. I think they've gained nine points. Um, it's a bit of a rocky start for me, I was able to train quite quickly and build up support in Saigon, giving myself a nice uh, six point boost quite early on, and um, also do some special forces uh, missions with some of my regulars. Um, my aim there was to uh, to get rid of the guerrillas in Bindin and Quang Tri and hopefully just get in quick enough to, um, to take them out and just relax about those regions. Uh, the complete opposite has happened in Bindin and is now under NVA control, basically. Uh, and um, the mountain, the highland terrain in this game makes it really difficult for the US to, um, to engage in combat and the ARVN unless there's a base present. What I was planning on doing uh, in that last round was to actually bring a base into Bindin, but unfortunately I didn't have control of the region so I wasn't able to. So yeah, the NVA have been incredibly busy. They've got a massive amount of guerrillas up in central Laos, uh, right next to Quang Tri. Um, so history is repeating itself a little bit there. Uh, like I said, they've got a big number of troops in southern Laos, two bases there, and uh, they've got a base and 12 troops in Bin Din. Two bases, two guerrillas, three troops in the Fishhook, and I think if they wanted to, they could probably get into Quang Duc here and take over that Viet Cong base as well. Um, so whilst it has been handy, the NVA have kind of been keeping the Viet Cong in check a little bit, they've boosted themselves massively and I'm really worried now because they've got a base right next to Saigon which is going to be an absolute nightmare especially when those um, pivotal events come in and they play the uh, the Easter offensive they're going to stroll right in and take me out basically um, as you saw the first card up there was booby traps so the Viet Cong did play that and basically what that means is every time I sweep or every time the ARVN sweeps on a roll of one to three one of the one of the troops is going to be eliminated basically so um, I did take one US troop casualty in that section of play um, but luckily I didn't lose it um, one very positive thing that happened to me there was I was able to play this uh, Gulf of sorry I've got a bad habit of doing that Gulf of Tonkin card which basically let me bring in six of my pieces from out of play, which is really nice. Um, because I found a lot of the times when I've played solo, the bots will deny me from, from bringing in those pieces. So, um, yeah, I didn't lose that many troops that round, but I didn't have that many pieces on the board to begin with. However, my special forces, my regulars, took a massive hit uh, on this 
LRRP card, long range uh, reconnaissance patrol. Um, that would have been really nice if I could have played that, but unfortunately the Viet Cong played that. And what that meant was I lost basically all of my irregular troops and each province they were taken from uh, actually shifted towards, um, towards opposition. So whilst those provinces started neutral, Opposition, I got there's opposition now in Bindin and Quang Tri, which is not good. Um, the ARVN were also very busy playing cards and boosting their patronage six, uh, quite significantly. Actually, they're on twenty two points of patronage, so they they were they got seven points of patronage in that in that sequence of play. Basically, um, they they swept into Kyunfong and then I air striked there, so that's under coin control now. And I've got uh, American troop and police in there, so my plan is just to build up that area, start getting support back there. Uh, they transported, they, they were training quite heavily in Saigon and Hue, uh, and they actually got support for me there, but they, if I, they're gonna definitely govern for patronage there. And I don't really wanna withdraw many of my troops up there to stop them doing that because I've got a real tricky situation here in Binh Binh. Uh, they did transport up to Quang Tri and were able to get coin control, but uh, there wasn't a base there at that time so they had to, they basically went back to Saigon during that, um, in that coup round. So yeah, the NVA basically by infiltrating here were able to, to bring in a large number of troops during the, um, the coup, the propaganda around there, on their redeploy. Uh, same in, in, in uh, Tain Ninh as well. I usually find when I play this that the Viet Cong have Tain Ninh under lockdown, but I've never seen it go to the, to the NVA that quickly. And I really, really need to get in there and deal with that as quick as I can, but it's quite a daunting prospect right now. Um, so what I've done, I basically, um, thankfully I was able to bring in those six pieces into play and, um, I didn't bring all 10 of my pieces into play in that propaganda round, but I did bring in six, I brought in, sorry, eight, I brought in six troops, which I've put in Da Nang, Hue, Quang Tri, uh, backed up Dalek, put some more in Saigon, and then I, I put a base into, uh, I forget the name of this place, Can Hua and Quang Tri, so... I built Kaysan basically, so hopefully that'll go a bit better for me than it did um, in reality. So basically my plan is here, I'm going to use this basically as like a, a reaction force, a quick reaction force area. So I'm going, to, I'm going to keep troops here and anytime the NVA come over the border, this is going to be my main base of operations for airlifting. So what I like to do is as soon as they come in, next round, I like to airlift into all the troubled areas and just try and knock them back as much as I can. I usually like to put a base in, in Bin Din, like I said, and have that as my quick reaction force zone, but I couldn't, unfortunately. So if I did have a base there, combat wouldn't be such an issue, but because I don't have a base, every two of my cubes is gonna take out one of their cubes, basically. So we're equal there, usually it'll be one, but if I have a base, it'd be um, two cubes for every one of my cubes. So yeah, bit of a nightmare, but Luckily, I'm hoping the bot will be distracted with me up here and I can start getting to work and gaining support in these regions down here because this area, this region, these regions of, of South Vietnam are vital, the Mekong Delta. Uh, there's a large amount of population there and it, it can basically, if I can get all of these um, provinces uh, to, to support the American government, I could have potentially... 16 points right there so um yeah i think i'm going to try and concentrate on this area i've got three goals for this next sequence of play basically take care of this start getting in position to take care of this and just work my way through here getting support um which is easier said than done because um i basically the arvn and, and the us hemorrhaged aid there basically I'm on four aid right now, which is not good at all. So I'm gonna to have to spend some time reining um, the South Vietnamese government in, in Saigon, producing their patronage and bringing the aid up and training as much as I can as well. So I've got a lot on my plate, a lot to think about here. Um, I'm hoping as well that the ARVN, the ARVN are gonna be a bit more uh, aggressive and start using their ranges a bit to kind of take some pressure off me and maybe even potentially they could sweep into here and get control back, maybe. But we'll see how that goes. So yeah, very eventful first uh, sequence of play. I'm, I'm quite hesitant to bring in any more troops right now because 
if I can get over 50 points, I can, if I can get myself over 50 points, I'll bring in more troops. But until then, I'm not going to. Um, I'd also quite like to, to prevent the ARVN from pulling their Vietnamization card too soon. So, but that's going to be really difficult, I think. But we'll see how it goes. Um, so I was able to get support. I was able to get active support in Saigon, uh, Comtum, and Da Nang. And I was also able to take away some opposition here and, um, and play coup. So not bad. Uh, I've got to remember that the Viet Cong are, are around as well and could potentially start. I mean, they took quite a heavy hit actually on their bases there. I was able to airstrike one of them away. And then obviously, like I said, the NVA just came in and, um, and infiltrated, but they could quite easily get a base back in Tainan and they can, they're probably gonna get a base back here in, um, in Quang Tin and they're probably gonna rally into to Quang Tri as well. So um, yeah, uh, a lot to think about here. So I'm gonna go, hopefully, Hopefully, hopefully the NBA won't be up first on the next card, because if they are, I'm screwed there. But if not, maybe it'd be a good time to just try and get in and take out as much of them as possible. Uh, the trail's on three right now, so not too bad. But the um, the NBA did play the AAA card, which means my airstrikes can't degrade it past um, two. So, not good. But yeah, the NBA are in... Uh, they're in force right now. So hopefully I can prevent the trail from getting up to four, meaning they can just spread themselves all across the border. So we'll see um, how that goes. But yeah, I'm in a decent position down here, not so good here. I'm not really that focused on this area right now, but I'm not in the worst position here either. So yeah, um, oh, by the way, the coup card, first coup card was um, Guyen Van Thieu, who was the actual president right up until the end, basically, of, um, of South Vietnam. So it's interesting he's come up first. Uh, in this game, and like, again, I think maybe um, Liberty or Death have some, have some similar stuff, but I haven't actually played it. But the coup cards in this game um, actually have effects on the rest of the game as well. So we had um, Dung Van Min as the base RVN, RVN leader. Um, so he gave bonus aid every time the ARVN trained, basically. But this guy, unfortunately, doesn't give any kind of... Um, any kind of special treatment to them, but I just need to get their patronage down enough before the uh, the Young Turks cards comes up. So yeah, that was the first propaganda card. Um, I'm gonna do two more in this video. I'm also gonna do shoot some kind of uh, time-lapse stuff as well with the next couple of sequences of play. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Um, hope you're enjoying so far and thank you very much. Okay, so we're post uh, second propaganda round, second coup round. Um, bit of a mixed bag in some respects. Um, you know, there's a lot of pressure relieved from me, and I mean, I've got a really good foundation now to um, to hopefully play out the next four um, four uh, sequences of play. Uh, as you might be able to see here, I was able to regain control of Bindin, uh, thankfully, because I was first up. Um, on the card. If I hadn't have been, it would have been a completely different story. So yeah, I was able to get control back in Bin Din, um, thanks to that, that QRF I set up down there in Khan Hua. I airlifted in um, from, from several other regions as well. Uh, so that was very, very handy. So they've lost some points there. And, um, you know, I've, I've been able to now get my base in there as well. So um, if they do come back in in the future, which I think they will, uh, I'm a bit. I don't have to divert as much of my um, as many of my forces than I would have would have had to if there was no base there. So that's uh, that's a positive. Um, negative is aid is still incredibly low, and um, after that um, section of play, I'm down to 37 points, which isn't great because um, the VC the Viet Cong played a few cards which. Uh, which caused me to lose a lot of 
support in the highlands and these regions here. Um, but luckily they were quite stationary in that run. They didn't spread out too much and they didn't get any more bases out. Um, and I was able to actually take care of the base up in Kwong Tri, which is really nice. Um, so I've got a decent foothold there. Uh, NVA are down to 10 points. Sorry, I should add the Viet Cong are at 24 points right now. So um, yeah, I feel like they're gonna be pretty busy very soon. But what the Viet Cong did do there actually, which was really, really handy for me, they played several cards which knocked the um, the ARVN's patronage down drastically. So they're on 10 points of patronage right now. Um, and they were on 22, I think, in the last uh, propaganda round. So they're currently, ARVN is sitting at 34 points. Just trying to find some of the cards. So yeah, rural pressure really uh, caused quite a big hit on me, but also in the AV ARVN. I was able to play this Honolulu conference card, which, um, which was really nice because that bumped the aid up, but took the patronage down. Um, yeah, and then Viet Cong also played this, which took the support out of Saigon, but reduced their patronage by six. So they, they, I don't have to worry as much in the following um, turns about them governing all that much anyway, because I actually airlifted them out of Hue right at the start and put them into Northeast Cambodia, which turned out really, really handy in the long run because uh, the last card that ARBN played was this uh, 559th transport group, which knocked the trail back two spaces because the trail was on a four at one stage. Um, so it went down to two and because Northeast Cambodia was uh, ARVN controlled at the end of that last propaganda round, the trail's down at one right now. So whilst I did take quite a bit of, quite a big hit on my points there, um, it's maybe not all that bad because, I mean, for a start, the NBA are out of Binh Din. Viet Cong haven't got that many points right now. So it really gives me a lot of opportunity to start actually, like I said, getting control uh, of the, getting support in these regions down here. Um, so after that redeployment, uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, so the ARVN took pretty much put all their police down here, but I, Basically, meaning I had to put a lot of my troops down there as well. Luckily, I'd airlifted a lot in prior to that. Um, they spread themselves out of Saigon, which is really unfortunate because if they, they could come in and get control almost instantly, basically. Um, I think every single one of the NVA's cubes is on the board right now, um, but they redeployed. It seems like, hopefully, actually looking at it now, it doesn't look good. <laughs> Take back everything I said, it doesn't look good. They've got a very significant force in Southern Laos and Central Laos. So they're gonna steam across the border any second, basically. And um, if they can get the trail back up to four, especially, I'm gonna lose my foothold in these regions down here. But if they can back themselves up in Tainan, they're gonna storm into Saigon. And if I don't stop that, then I've lost the game very early, basically. So uh, yeah, um, they've also got all their guerrillas out. So not looking good. The positive is they're on 10 points right now. So everyone took quite a large hit then. So, um, yeah, I think, I'd say the ARVN are probably in the worst position right now because their patron is so low. So even if I get control of a lot of regions, it's not gonna bump them up too much. Uh, I'd say the Viet Cong and the NVA, I'd say actually the Viet Cong are probably in the second worst position and it's all to play for between me and the NVA right now. It could go either way between us. So uh, we'll see. So maybe I need to start getting in and taking care of some of their bases actually. Um, especially that one in Tainan, oh, stressing me out. So uh, yeah, fingers crossed on that one. But like I said, the positive of that is Bindin's under control, I've pushed them back into Southern Laos, got the base there, so combat's gonna be a lot easier from, uh, from now on. Um, let me see, I also forgot to mention, I spent quite heavily there to get rid of um, some opposition, especially in Bindin and uh, somewhere else as well, can't quite think where. Oh yeah, uh, in um, in Khan Hua actually. So that's nice. Um, let's see, where are we? Uh, Guyan Khan is the current coup card. So that's gonna significantly hamper the ARVN's ability to transport for now. Um, which actually isn't great for me because I, I like it when they transport because they, they can back me up in certain areas. So maybe I should stick quite close to them, especially if uh, a failed Q card comes up anytime soon. 
Um, there was no capabilities actually then. No capabilities came into play. Um, so they're probably going to be in this, the next batch. Uh, I'm hoping I can get Search and Destroy or Arc Light. I think those are in the 65 section. Um, sorry, another thing I forgot to mention actually, um, unlike a lot of other coin games, these cards are actually, you don't have to, but you can play them. They're broken up into to three years, basically. So there's 64, which represents that build-up. 1965 cards, which is like 65 to 68. And then 1968 cards, which is 68 to 72. And when the 1968 cards come in, it gets incredibly hard for the... Uh, for the amount of cards. Um, so yeah, that's another thing I forgot to mention. Um, another thing I forgot to mention, actually, is that there's no capabilities. You don't have to, but you can play them. They're broken up into to three years, basically. So there's 65 to 68. And then 1968 cards, which is 68 to 72. And when the 1968 cards come in, it gets incredibly hard for the Americans. Harder than it already is. So, um, yeah, I think I need to actually stop talking about it and actually try and get support here. The issue is... I can only get support once in this next sequence, cause, uh, next portion of play, because uh, ARVN have only got 20 resources now, right now, because aid, I did manage to get it up, but because I took casualties that round, it's gone back down. And I took four casualties in that section of play, so three of them came back to me, but one went out of play. So, not too bad. Uh, I didn't bring any more troops in, because I, I, I just don't want it right now. I've got a decent amount on the... Um, on the board, uh, but the pivotal events are going to come in soon. But um, yeah, we'll see how those get played. Uh, I, the, technically, I could start bringing them in now, but I'm going to wait until the next cue card just because it feels a bit weird for this Viet Cong to be able to pull the Tet Offensive in like 66. So yeah, and for the NBA to do like the Easter Offensive in that time frame as well because historically I think Tet was 68 the Easter Offensive was 1972 so um, yeah but next next propaganda round I'm going to bring them in next Q round sorry I keep getting the terminology mixed up on these in most coin games it's called propaganda round <coughs> in this one it's called Q round they function very similarly but yeah okay so yeah this is the board post second Q round um, I guess I could take on a little little tour so this is how it's looking in the Mekong. Uh, this is the jungles around Saigon. And Saigon itself there. Uh, we've got the central highlands up here. So it's come around too. Uh, coming up north. Quang Ting Danang, Quang Tri. Quang Nam and Hue there. And then as you can see on the border here. Just copious amounts of uh, of NVA. So yeah, I'm feeling cautiously optimistic. So yeah, let's see how it goes. Okay, so third propaganda card, Q round is over. Um, this is the state of the board right now. Uh, that was a really intense round for a few different reasons. Uh, there was a lot of um, really tough decisions with the cards. Um, <laughs> the most like coin thing ever happened basically with the three cards I had in a row, um, which I'll get into in a minute. So yeah, some really intense tricky card play going on, uh, NVA once again being incredibly sneaky, uh, and the Viet Cong waking up from a nap it seems, because uh, they have shuffled things up quite a bit and were a massive pain in the ass for me in that last, um, that last section of play, that last sequence of play. Um, at one stage I was on 19 points of support and availability. Um, because due to some certain cards being played and Viet Cong terror, I lost support in Saigon, Hue, Da Nang, like, uh, I think, can't quite remember where else. Um, so yeah, that was like a really massive blow. That was like almost 20 points basically worth of support gone. Uh, I was able to luckily buy back most of that um, in that last round, but 
financially, the uh, ARVN and myself are pretty screwed right now. So uh, scores as it stands, um, US is on 37 points of available troops and support. Uh, ARVN is also on 37 points of coin control and patronage. Um, Viet Cong are currently on 28 points, opposition and bases. They were up to like 33 at one point, I think. Um, but fortunately, I was able to do a few things uh, to rectify that. And also, ARVN came through massively in that last coup round and took away about eight points of um, opposition. It's really nice when they uh, when they do what they're supposed to do. So, yeah, um, they're on 28 points right now, and the NVA are currently sitting on 12 points of NVA control and bases. So, um, Bindin was once again uh, a major flashpoint, but luckily still under control. Uh, you probably noticed Tainin has changed quite a bit, and is now under total VC control thanks to a really nice card. I'll see if I can find it in here. Yeah, it was the uh, Play May card, which basically allowed me to remove, uh, I think, yeah, three pieces from one space, which was very nice. Um, again, uh, Arvin patronage, ARVN patronage is down massively. They did come up a bit, but they're on 10 right now. Uh, 10 points of patronage, because um, the VC rallied in several places and kept subverting um, the ARVN, which in game terms basically replaces or takes two of their pieces away and drains their patronage, or you can replace one with one of theirs. And that just kind of re represents them um, either like scaring off the local troops or convincing them to join their um, to join their cause. So that's really interesting. I took four casualties in that last round. Nothing from direct uh, conflict direct combat but um the nva bombarded me pretty heavily in saigon and in Binden from across the border um very very glad that tainin is not under control but at least um saigon isn't facing imminent imminent downfall at any minute basically um vc have also managed to get into saigon which is always a nightmare um i've just realized that actually that should be that way um so if they can terror before i can do anything then i'm going to lose just keep losing points in saigon and having to waste time and money on them um, and fixing that up uh so yeah i took four casualties in that last round so again only one's gone out of play and three have come back to me um i've kind of had to disperse a lot of my troops from kianhua uh the qrf quick reaction force thing was working really well but now Bindin's under control as well, so I've kind of got two. I've got them split up a little bit because um, things are not looking good up in Kuang Tri or Kuang Tin. So um, NVA were able to get a base in there last minute and looks like Battle of Khaesan is going to happen any day now. Uh, they've got quite a significant amount of troops up there and I've not got that many. I have got a base there, so combat's going to be a bit more forgiving, but I'm going to have to scramble some, some troops up there in time, well, hopefully I can get them up there in time. I have got a few troops in Hue, which I can back them up with as well. But if I take them out of there, then the ARV aren't gonna be able to go them for patronage there. They're gonna be able to in um, in Qianhua, basically, but I'm hoping what I can do is, I don't know, I've just realized I can't do that. I was gonna say, I was hoping I could uh, train and divert them somewhere else, but basically after that last coup round, the ARV have only got five resources and aid is completely drained. Oh, so, uh, yeah, hopefully if they do um, govern for patronage early on, it'll, it'll be to increase the aid up a little bit and I'm just going to have to start training again, um, advising rather, to get the aid flowing in and hopefully some cards will give me some aid as well. Um, ooh, that being said, actually, the um, pivotal events are going to come in now, so I think actually the way things are looking, I'm going to try and let them pull their Vietnamization card sooner rather than later just so they can kind of back me up a little bit and their patronage is super low right now anyway so I'm not too worried about that plus if I'm going to go through to um, full of Saigon expansion I do need them to be in a decent position so I've got a lot to balance out right now uh, basically in the north of the country there's no support for me apart from in Hue so uh, Quang Tri, Quang Nam 
Pointin and Da Nang are all at uh, opposition. Contum also fell. Contum's gone. That's gone to the VC, but I don't think it'd be that hard for me to get back in and take control of that. But it's just going to cost me more time and money uh, to get that opposition out of there. Um, the jungle around Saigon has been pretty steady at opposition. Um, and I just don't really have enough time or people to deal with that right now. And it's harder for me to flush them out of the jungle as well. And that booby traps card has um, been a real nightmare. Uh, speaking of capabilities, uh, and this is where it was such a classic coin moment. I just had a really, really hard decision to make. So I, I mentioned it, I wanted to play either Arc Light or Search and Destroy soon, hopefully. But basically I had a tricky situation. I was presented with the, um, the Da Nang card which lets me bring in more of my troops from out of play. Um, sorry, again, I've got a really bad habit of doing that. Um, but it was either going to be play that and have the uh, NVO or the VC play the Search and Destroy card, which would be an absolute nightmare. Basically, yeah, Search and Destroy lets you um, assault one underground gorilla, which is really handy. Um, I can't really see anything on the board right now. Uh, Say if there was only one gorilla and one base in there, I could just go in straight away and get rid of it, which is really nice. And it's really handy as well after, um, if you are planning on maybe airlifting some of your special forces or rangers in. So I've been able to play that, which is great. Cause uh, if, the, if any of the other factions played that, any of the gorilla factions played that, then um, basically any time I do an assault, the province would shift towards opposition, which is an absolute nightmare. Um, in one way it's good because it makes you focus on other things but at the same time it just leaves you really open and vulnerable and you have to sacrifice a lot basically um, you either have to focus your assaults on provinces where they're already at active opposition or where you've got enough support where it's, it's not going to hit you too hard and you better make sure you can um, you can take them all out basically but straight away after that arc like came up um, and was actually played by the insurgent faction. So if I remove more than one piece um, from an area with an airstrike, I've now got to shift it um, two levels towards active opposition, which is a nightmare. I've said nightmare a lot in this video because basically it is a bit of a nightmare right now. But the good news is um, the Mekong is looking pretty good right now. Only issue is police outnumber me quite a lot. So they're going to start governing for patrons there soon. But like I said, their first couple of governs are going to be to get that aid back, hopefully. But yeah, that region is under lockdown pretty... Um, sorry, lockdown might be confusing these days. Uh, basically, that region, there's only one VC governor in there right now. They're probably going to start moving in from Tainan and start getting more people in there. But I'm just like, I'm just so grateful the NVA had gone from there right now because that would have been nightmare the longer that had been um, had been left uh, the nva have been really active like so you you can probably see where they are that was actually from a redeploy but they were they marched into loads of places several times uh, had unlock at one point had tain in um they did capture bindin back again um and they're probably gonna infiltrate this uh base off the vc soon as well um but actually, really interestingly, uh, when, when the NVA did march in, uh, the next uh, Viet Cong turn, they actually rallied in and took control away from them. So it's really interesting to see that happening with the bots, because um, whilst I'm fighting, not fighting against the ARV, and I'm trying to get them to do what I want them to do and keep an eye on them, uh, the Viet Cong and the NVA are doing the same as well. So it's really cool. It's just a really cool part of this game. Um, so... Yeah, we're about halfway through the deck right now. Uh, sorry, it's quite tricky to get everything in um, in shot. So this is um, this is what we haven't played, basically. I reckon there's about 40 cards there, maybe. This is what we've gone through. So some, oh, yeah, a lot. We've gone all the way from, through 64. And we're a good chunk of the way through the 1965 cards now. So if I, if I was to kind of estimate where we're at uh, in terms of, of history, I'd probably say we're like halfway through. 1967 here, um, yeah, and then yeah, those 68 cards are going to come in soon, and depending on the way 
that falls, it's going to be really tricky. Um, from the last two round, Young Turks right now, which is great for the Arvin player, the ARVN player, but if you're not, then it's <laughs> pretty irritating. Basically, um, that's going to grant them extra patronage, um, which mm, isn't as bad now because only on 10 patronage. If they are all the way up on like the late tw mid 20s, like they were earlier, that would be a nightmare. But I guess, mm, no, it's going to be a nightmare. Unless I get another propaganda card soon after that, in which case I won't have to worry about it all too much. But yeah, um, like I said, in the Mekong, everything is looking pretty decent. I've only got the ARVN to worry about there, so hopefully I can spread them out a little bit. Um, Highlands looking okay. There's no support, actually, but there's not a great deal of opposition either. Like I said, the only problem I'm, the main problem I'm having is that the, the finance uh, aid has just gone like no money's coming in and I really need to do something to sort that out as well but I'm just finding that um, every time I bring the aid up the ARVN's governing for patronage and bringing it straight back down again um, but yeah north in the north is where things are really turning sour right now um, so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out because like, there's not been a stage where I've taken like a massive amount of casualties yet but um, yeah I have a feeling if there's going to be that stage is coming pretty soon. Um, I think there was also the Viet Cong did like a big wave of terror up in Quang, Tru, Quang Tien, sorry, uh, and down in Tainan to get their opposition back, and in Saigon as well, like I said, and some other cards drained my uh, support there too. Um, I've got a lot of my special forces down here, but they haven't really got much to do. Um, so I'm thinking I'm going to shift them back up here and maybe actually start trying to run some missions in Laos and Cambodia. Um, because the trail is on four right now, and it should be on three actually. And these guys should be reset as well. Uh, that that was nice actually. The ARVN have actually been quite aggressive this turn too. They they actually got control back in Anlock and actively were heading into Tainan and, and trying to break that up a little bit, and um, also doing some raids up in the these regions here. But unfortunately. It's too little, too late. Up in uh, up in Quang Tri and Quang Tien as well. Um, the LOCs, lines of communication, the locks haven't had a great deal of traffic yet. A um, bit more so in that last round, but the ARVN police, after the redeploy, have kind of moved in a bit to try and take care of that. But that's also draining my money, so I need to maybe as the Americans do some patrolling. Because I think I can also advise if I patrol, so that's maybe not the worst I do in the world. Um, because, like I said, and I keep saying it, and I'm sorry, but financially, it's screwed right now. So, yeah. Um, I guess, score-wise, it, it changed a lot during play, but after the propaganda round, it's kind of back to where it was. But, um, so I'm not, not in the worst of positions, and thank God I was able to play Search and Destroy and not one of the other factions, because that would have been an absolute nightmare. Um, and to be honest with you, I don't really use airstrikes all that much. I mainly use them to on the trail, or if um, if I, if I know I can take a, a good deal of forces out of an area which is already out of active opposition. Um, I don't know if I do. I I I know historically, um, obviously America bombed Vietnam heavily, but didn't actually yield that great a result from it. And um, I think that's modeled quite well in the game. And I, I just, I mean, it's gonna sound weird having an ethical issue with with doing that while I'm playing something like this, but yeah, I kind of do. So um, it's not really part of my big game plan, but it will be quite irritating if I, if I do get the opportunity. But hopefully later on in the game, I'll be able to play laser guided bombs, the capability card with um, Cobras, because that's like the perfect combination. It makes the, it just, it's like, not quite game breaking, but it's like the perfect coin play where you, you've got Cobras and laser guided bombs. You can come in, sweep them out, get rid of one of them, and then um, bomb them without any penalty. Sounds weird saying that out loud, but yeah, cool. Right, so um, this is going to conclude part one. So, um, wait, is it? Isn't it three? Yeah, three Q cards. Yeah, yeah, so that's going to conclude um, part one of the video. Um, so, yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed so far. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out. Um, if you haven't played the game, I highly recommend it. Um, if you saw my previous 
series on um, distant plane, I'd be interested um, if you can kind of see the differences between the games, you know, I mean, specifically the terrain layout of this one. It's crazy because like, um, you know, in, in the distant plane, you've got all the Taliban building up on the border. Here you've got all the, um, the NVA building up on the border, but it's such a, a tight area. It gets really hectic really quickly. Um, so yeah, I, I probably won't bring any more of my troops in, I don't think. If I do, it'll only be like maybe three or four. But I'm just not willing to do that at the moment because I'm just not really in a position to be able to do that. But maybe if I do bring them in now, just to kind of, and just really focus on getting the NVA back, then maybe... That would be a good strategy, but I just don't know. After that, I didn't bring in any more in that coup round. Um, but if I take heavy casualties this round, I might have to. But we shall see how that goes. Because I, I, um, yeah, I don't know if I want to um, fully retreat after the Paris Peace Accords. But we'll see. A lot to think about. But I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna call it there for tonight and just um, have a think about my plan, come back to this tomorrow. So yeah, thanks very much everyone for watching so far. Hope you've been enjoying, hope you've been following along. Uh, again, I hope this makes sense, I tend to ramble. I feel like I'm eloquent until the camera's on basically, but yeah, cool. Nice one guys, I'll see you in the next one.